Hey, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast with me, Rob Kosberg. Every week, I interview thought leaders and experts who have used the book to grow their income and their impact. So tune in weekly for these interviews so you can learn how to use your own best-selling book and go from hunting for clients and opportunities to instead being the hunted. Hey, welcome everybody. Rob Cosper here. Uh, excited to bring you another great guest for the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. I have Mr. Matt DeMeo here with us today. Matt is the memory guy. Uh, <laughs> school tells you what to learn. Matt teaches you how to learn it. He's in his fifth decade, hard to believe, I mean, barely has any gray hair, of producing attention, getting results, speaker, trainer, published author. He has three great books, best-selling book, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about those. You have a great YouTube channel, Be Smarter Faster, which I really like. You have a cool saying around that. You teach accelerated learning skills that have helped tens of millions of of students and gained world a worldwide audience. Matt, thank you so much for being with me on the podcast today, my friend. Rob, I got to tell you, it is a sincere pleasure that you invited me. I've listened to your other podcasts, seen the, the caliber and the quality of your other guests. And quite frankly, I am honored and pleased to be in such auspicious company. So I'm excited to be here as well. Well, with words like that, holy cow, you know, I, I love to hear that. So no, seriously, thank you. I'm, I'm honored and honored to be able to talk to you. I mean, you've done some pretty amazing things. Um, you got started in this a number of years ago as kind of the memory guy, and that's probably not the best terminology. So maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, you have the YouTube videos out there where, where you go into an audience of 500 people, you remember every person's name, which blows my mind. So talk to me a little bit about that expertise and uh, I would assume learned skill that you have. You know, that's a great place to start because sometimes people wonder if I'm some sort of a Martian, right. you know, if I have some special gene that allows me to learn things fast. And the truth is, it's like learning how to ride a bicycle. Mm. Nobody is born knowing how to do it. It becomes a learned ability. Now, some people take it to extreme lengths and they go racing on the Tour de France and all of that with their bicycles. But everybody starts out the same way, wobbling around on, you know, right. when you first learn how to get the training wheels off. And, and what happened with me is rather than just memory, and a lot of people know me for doing demonstrations of memory power, because when I walk into a room and recall dozens or hundreds of names, it becomes impossible to argue with me as to whether or not these ideas work. Right. And so there's very few speakers out there that are able to give you proof of concept upon saying hello. Mm. You know, you've just got to read their bio and hope that they actually know what they're talking about. But right. when I'm able to do practical demonstrations and show them, and then as I go through my presentation, I actually reveal to them what the techniques are that allow me to do these things. And it's, mm. it's a very mechanical process. Mm. But rather than just memory, which is really the last part of the learning process, I talk about the entire scope of how to learn everything and anything faster and easier than you ever dreamed possible. Wow. I want to and, know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you learn faster, you can earn faster. Yeah. Look, we live in a world of information overload. Those who can't keep up run the risk of being left behind. Yeah. And most people didn't really gain the practical mechanics for how to learn stuff when they were in school. As you pointed out in my bio, where I talk about, you know, school tells you what to learn, but they don't teach you how to learn it. For right. example, right. all your life, people will say, or teachers or parents will wag their finger at you and say, pay attention. And yet, did you ever take a class in how to focus, how to concentrate, how to yeah. pay attention? Yeah. yeah. Unless you're in martial arts or meditation, probably not. Right. Every great sales trainer in the world tells you, well, it's not just about what you say. You've got to be an excellent listener. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You need to listen twice as much as you talk. What the heck does that mean? Right, right. What are the mechanics 
of being an excellent listener. Yeah. Let me stop you right there for a moment because uh, you're teasing us a little. And I, I want to know some of the, the foundational pieces of this because, you know, that that's really powerful. I, I think, like you said, you know, everybody starts riding a bike. They're all wobbly. Some go on to, to the Tour de France. So I think there is some, right, there is some genetic makeup in the ability to remember. But clearly there's foundational building blocks involved. Give me what some of those are if you can. Absolutely. And the point that you just made regarding the, the bicycle analogy, you're right. Some people are genetically predisposed to being extraordinary athletes. Yeah. But literally anybody can learn how to ride a bicycle right. well. Agreed. Not everybody can become a pro. Just yeah. like anybody can toss around a football or a baseball, right. not everybody can make it into the, to the pro leagues. So I've taken it to extreme lengths to prove a point. Now, ultimately, when you're looking at how you learn things, you know, we talk about the concept of how an idea sinks in. Yeah. And we use that terminology without really understanding, what do you mean it sinks in? Well, I'm going to come back to that in just a quick moment. But before I tell you what those six things are, I want to give you the two foundational blocks that everything is based on. Okay. There are two things that are absolutely essential to understand about how you absorb information. The greatest power that human beings have. And sometimes when I do seminars, I ask them, what's the greatest power you have? And then people are rambling all over the place. They have no idea what it is. And if you don't, if you're not even sure, how can you maximize it? The greatest power that human beings have is imagination. Mm, good. All creation comes from first holding images in your head. Hmm. All creation comes from that. It doesn't matter whether you're a musician, whether you are a painter, a builder, a carpenter, a mathematician. So you first have a sense of imagery of some sort in your head. Right. The second thing that human beings are really good at is connection. The way your mind works, the way your synapses work, is that they connect one thing to another. And it's like when I was a little kid, Tinker Toys. These days, Lego. Yeah. You connect yeah. this one to that one, and pretty soon you can build these massive structures. Right. If you listen to the way little kids learn stuff, they'll look at you and go, Daddy, Grandpa, Uncle, Auntie, you mean it's like, it's like, mm. right. This is like that. Right. They're looking for the connection. And so simply what I do is I show people how to use imagery and then make connections with that imagery to what it is that they're learning how to do. Hmm. Now, for example, I'll give you a quick example about people's names and I'll yeah. talk about why people don't remember stuff as we go here. But yeah. Typically, you and I were at a cocktail party, we're at a chamber of commerce event, we're at a social networking, and we meet each other. And I come over and I go, "Hi, how are you?" And you go, "Well, yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, my name's Matt. Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Rob. Oh, uh, hi." And we chit chat for a while, and then we drift off to other parts of the room. Right. Well, there's three causes of forgettery. The first cause of forgettery is that you don't get it. If you don't get it. You can't keep it. So sometimes somebody will introduce you to a buddy and you go, hi, I want you to meet my friend, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. And you go, yeah, nice to see you. How you doing, pal? Yeah. If you didn't get the name, you can't keep the name. Makes this sense. is a real problem when you're meeting people with foreign names. The second cause of forgettery is that you don't care. Mm. Now, people go, oh, Matt, but but I care. Yeah, you care, but you don't care enough to do something about it. Mm. It's like if somebody wants to get in shape, but they don't go and exercise. Right. You know, you care, but you don't care enough to do anything. Not that much. <laughs> and so I teach kind of a mental filing system. If you put things away where you know where they are, it's easy to find them when you need them. So the caring means you need to care enough to so we've got, you don't get, you don't care. But the third one is by comparison. And that is you don't believe. You know what you don't believe? You don't believe you have a superhuman capability to remember whatever you want right now. You already have it. It's already built in. Mm. People go, oh, I can always remember a face, but I can never remember a name. Or, 
or they go, oh, I must be getting the Alzheimer's. Meantime, they're in their 30s. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, oh, I, I'm terrible at remembering people's names. Well, saying that kind of stuff to yourself is not the result of a bad memory. That's the cause. Nice. Because you live up to it. Why try if you already know you've got a bad memory? So, I, you know, my, my memory stinks. Why bother to try anyhow? Right. So what I do is I, I take the process and I break it down a little chunk. So let's go back to the introduction between Matt and Rob. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get Rob's name. So if Rob's got an unusual or a foreign sounding name or a name with a bunch of syllables in it, you know, I recently did a, an event for the U.S. Indo Chamber of Commerce where everybody had three and four syllable Indian names. And they were blown away that I could remember literally, I don't know, 50, 60 people that I had met during a cocktail hour right. a couple of hours earlier when the, when the event started. You've got to pay attention to getting the name right from the beginning. If you're not clear on it, ask them to repeat it. Sometimes ask them how it's spelled. If you don't get it, you can't keep it. Yep. My belated little Italian grandmother taught me the secret to being able to learn anything and everything faster and better and remember it in just two words. Now, anytime you can teach something as big as how to learn anything and everything faster and better and remember it and do it in just two words, those are really important two words. Yeah. Do I have your agreement? Yes, I agree. So here's grandma's two words. A pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Have you ever met people that are so broke they can't even pay attention? Yeah, I have. And so <laughs> the first thing is you need to pay attention to the person's name. And then secondly, you need to care that you remember it. Make the effort. Say to yourself things like, you know, uh, I'm going to remember him. I'm going to remember her. And so it's all of that belief type stuff. I, yeah. I'll give you a quick example. Here in the Tampa Bay area, I belong to a, a, a business group. And one of the people who's a professional photographer travels all over the country. He's a really in-demand uh, photographer named Rick. And Rick not only does business events, and, and uh, but he does weddings as well. And so he was invited up to Atlanta for a really uh, high-end wedding. And... A week later, he came back and he reported to me. He goes, Matt, Matt, I can't believe it. I got to tell you this story. I went to this wedding and I used what you taught me. And I remembered everybody in the wedding party's name. I remembered everybody in the reception that I met. And I went, Rick, I'll bet you didn't even use any of the imagination and connection techniques that I teach. You just used the three causes of forgettery, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I paid attention. I cared. I kept telling myself I'm going to remember them. And guess what? It worked. Yeah. Well, duh. And remembering people's names is probably one of the most important things you can do to help you earn money in this world. You know, you've heard it a million times. It's not what you know. It's who you know. Yeah. And so that's why the topic of the first book that I wrote is called How to Remember People's Names. Yeah, yeah. And now you're on the second edition of that book. Is that right? That's correct. I've, I revised it, uh, redid it. And uh, as a matter of fact, I got it right here. Nice. Yay. There it is. There <laughs> and, it is. <laughs> hey, and talk, so, talk to me um, some, Matt, about your books. Uh, maybe we could change gears a little bit. And I, I'd love to hear, you know, why you've decided to write the books and obviously continue to write the books and maybe even more than that, what have your books done to get your message out? Because, you know, when you speak in front of an event and there are 500 people there and you're dazzling the audience, that's 500 true believers now. I assume, though, that, you know, there's perhaps in books a better way to get your message out. Talk to me a little bit about your books, why you wrote them and what they've done for you. You know, Writing the books for me was not so much a business decision as my way of leaving a legacy. Nice. So I didn't do it primarily for the financial gain. Right. I did it as a way of saying, hey, I was here and I mattered. Yeah. My third book, Straight A Strategies for Successful Online Learning, was actually written with a very specific purpose. You know, as a result of all of the political illness of the COVID nonsense, the 
schools were turned upside down and parents' lives were turned upside down right. when for a whole year their kids were stuck at home. My own daughter's a student at Florida State University. Mm. Partway through her freshman year in college, uh, she was supposed to come home for spring break and she wound up never going back. She spent her entire sophomore year with us uh, here in the Tampa area. And instead of doing what she should have been doing, they, all her classes were online. Now for her junior year, she's going to be going back up to Tallahassee. Has he? But right. so the idea of writing a book like that was to really make an impact on the lives of students that were floundering around in a brand new area. And right. that book hit the number one bestseller status within just a couple of weeks of being released on Amazon. And what it did for me is it drove a lot of people to my YouTube channel. Mm. It also got me bookings on radio shows. Nice. Because people were all, you know, people want solutions to real world problems. And my books, rather than being philosophical, provide solutions to the types of common problems that people have. I'll give you an example. My third book is called Forgetful No More. Mm. That deals with the subject of, do you ever put down your keys, your wallet, your eyeglasses, and then later on you have to play treasure hunt to find them? Sure. You ever walk into a room and you don't remember why? Mm. Uh, did you ever, uh, you're in the middle of a conversation and, uh, and you got the answer to that question on the tip of your tongue and it just won't come to you? Or worse, you're in the middle of an exam and you know the answer to that question and you just can't get it to come to you. Well, in the book Forgetful No More, I talk about how to get things to pop into your head, how to not leave home without that important report you were supposed to bring, how to make sure that when you're driving to the store with your shopping list and you think of three more things that you realized are not on your list, how to make sure that you're able to buy them when you're in the store and not be halfway home and go, oh, I forgot the stuff that I was going to buy. Right. So I solve practical problems. Now, as a result of that, sure, business has increased because when you can solve people's problems, they they want to know how you can help them solve whatever problems that they've got. Yeah. And so uh, it's become more of a mission and a passion than merely a business decision. Love it. Love it. And so do the books, you said the books have led to opportunities for media and PR and have driven clients to you, helped you grow your YouTube channel, etc. Is there, it didn't sound like there was a strategy, at least in the beginning. You said that you wrote them initially for legacy, which is fantastic. A very, very important reason to write your book is to, you know, leave your knowledge and information behind. But I sense that that's changed a little bit. So now are you beginning to write and create uh, to continue to grow your business, get more opportunities, those kinds of things? Well, I am a capitalist. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so, yes, you know, I am profit driven. I am financially driven. I find, though, that at this age, like I think I mentioned in our pre-talk that yeah. I turned 69 this past March. Yeah. Congrats. You know, at this. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I, I started my 70th year. I didn't. Crazy, it's, right? It's, it's <laughs> stunning to realize that I'm already here. You know, and by the way, for people that talk about, you know, well, age, you know, is is the reason that you can't remember things. You know, I kind of put the kibosh on, on that sort of thinking by Baloney. virtue of what I'm able to do. Right. But the idea of writing the books as a business decision. Yes. Now that I've had some success with my books, yeah. you know, I'm really going to be throwing more gas on that fire and really approaching it from more of a business direction. Love so it. I find that the books help build my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel help builds the books. It gives me an opportunity to get my word out. But the most important thing that the books do is give me a base of credibility. You know, you tell somebody you're a YouTuber, great. Well, maybe they think you publish funny cat videos. Right. <laughs> I'm a 70-year-old <I'm laughs> YouTuber that publishes funny cat videos. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but when you talk about the fact that you've got multiple books out, as a matter of fact, I've just started working on my fourth and fifth book. Beautiful. Um, yeah. the, one of my books is going to be Building Brilliant Kids. Mm. You know, parents are looking for what are the advantages that they can give children when they're really little yeah. to give them the mechanics of how to learn things fast. Yeah. And so 
Beautiful. Hey, uh, can I tell you how I got started with all of this stuff? Like way, way back. Please do. And and then we'll give them some links that, you know, uh, last word and some links where they can, you have some new stuff coming out and, and uh, let's let them know where they can find you. Perfect. Well, the year was 1980. I was living in New Jersey, which is where I'm originally from. Hey, how you doing? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, and, your Italian grandma. <laughs> I'm an Italian. Right, I'm an Italian from New Jersey. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Um, the year was 1980, and I was working for a chain of computer programming schools. Now, this was a year before IBM was going to release its first PC to the public, so the world was still operating on punch cards. Some of your Listeners and viewers are old enough to remember them. Yep, we've and, heard of them. <laughs> and most of the students that were attendees at my school were young adults looking for a career change. And so they didn't come fresh out of school. They hadn't been recently studying. Their study habits were terrible. And as a result, my school had an unacceptably high dropout rate. And my income was directly tied to our ability to collect tuition. So I did not like getting chargebacks. So I began to research what could I do to help prevent my students from dropping out. Hmm. And I began to research the subject of how to be a better student. Now, I went to Villanova University. And after two years, I realized I'd rather be a professional musician. And so I left school. And I never did pursue music at that point because I got into business, discovered I was really good at selling, and wound up having an amazing career building large sales forces for all kinds of different companies. But I couldn't use my own example as a student, as a way, as a model to help these students out at these at, at my schools. So I began to research the subject and I discovered information about studying textbooks is different than reading a novel. How do you read faster than you ever did before? How do you focus, pay attention, become a better listener? What are the mechanics? How do you take notes better? And so I began to teach a short class called What School Never Taught You About Learning where I condensed all of this stuff about note taking and test taking and pay a uh, focus and concentration into a 90 minute uh, session. And I taught it twice a semester to the same group. The first time about two weeks in to their classes. So they were already rocking and real and you know, going, I need help. And then about two weeks before they graduated so that they would really do well on their finals. Not only did I stop the dropout rate, or dr drastically improve it. But we vastly improved the job placement rate, which was the big deal. And that's when the amazing thing happened. I began to get calls from the companies that hired my graduates, mm. wondering what we were doing different at our school because our graduates were outperforming students who came from the competition or came from our school in the past. Wow. They were like, what? You're a, a way better than other people we've hired. What's the secret? Mm. The kids had an unfortunate nickname for me at our school. They called me Matt the Memory Man. And, and I hate that because people it's expect still to be still stuck perfect. all these years <laughs> later. <laughs> and so I began to get calls from professional organizations, the Data Processing Managers Organization, Association, the Association of Systems Managers. All of these professional organizations began to invite me in to do after dinner speaking engagements to talk to their professionals. And I would do shtick. I would memorize magazines. I would memorize a deck of playing cards. I would call, I would end every meeting by the same way. I'd call everybody in the room by name. And then I would sell tickets to my upcoming live seminar. So I got started because what I taught generated real world results for employees. Mm. And as a result, I used those techniques to help me build large and successful sales organizations for lots of different types of companies. Yeah. Because selling is a process of learning and teaching and learning and teaching. The, the prospect has got to be able to understand and learn the information well enough that they're willing to part with their money at right. the end process. Right. But you've got to first get your brand new recruit salesperson up to speed and have the product knowledge and learn the pitch and learn the, the content. So it's all about learning and teaching and learning and teaching. And since that's what I specialized in, I was able to employ these ideas in a way that was 
in addition to schooling. And now that I'm technically retired from normal business, I've been helping students all over the world through my YouTube channel and my books. Love it. Love it. What a cool 40-year career you've had. And uh, what a great way to kind of further propagate training and and the things that you've learned. So uh, why don't you tell us where can people find you on YouTube and what upcoming stuff do you have that you maybe, you know, want to give us some links to and and let our listeners know about? Sure. Well, there's three things. So the first one is you can get a lot of free information on test taking, studying textbooks. How do you pass exams? How do you get motivated to study? That sort of thing at my YouTube channel, youtube.com and then forward slash be smarter, faster, be smarter, faster, because that's what you're going to learn how to do, how to be smarter, faster. Love it. All that content is free. Then I have a brand new video training course called an incredible memory, Mm. how to have an incredible memory. So you go to an incredible memory.com. Love it. What makes this special is I break the process down into little bite sized videos of anywhere from about a minute to about five minutes where I address each individual part of the problem. So I really get into, for example, how do you remember numerical information? Because people have dates, addresses, times, invoice numbers, part numbers, uh, profit and loss information. The amount of numerical information you got to learn for business and for school is staggering. So how do you do it? And so I break the process down. How do you remember people's names? And I break it down, everything from the introduction all the way on through. How do you do this imagination and connection stuff? Love it. How do you stop forgetting your keys or losing your wallet or playing treasure hunt to find your TV remote, you know, and all of those forgetful types of stuff. So I break it down into little tiny bite-sized pieces and it's all at anincrediblememory.com Great. with a lot more courses to come. Awesome. Awesome. Well, those are great places for people to go. And uh, I think you've spelled out exactly what it is that they're going to get and receive. So love it. Matt, thank you for being with us. Thanks for sharing a little bit of your magic and also uh, how your books have uh, kind of furthered your career and your message out there. So thank you for being on the Publish Pro Profit Podcast. My sincere pleasure. Thank you for having me. And God bless you. God bless you too, my friend.